Hi, I'm Robert Riggs. This is the Clarity Clip of the Week with my partner Brad Besakin and our guest this week, Nathan Harness of Texas A&M. And we're talking millennials. Yeah, you know, we just spent a few minutes with you in a leadership summit, and you mentioned some really pointed things about millennials that I think from a small business standpoint, social media standpoint, and just big business in general needs to start paying attention to. A couple of things you mentioned was, first of all, give us a story of this Olympic athlete that basically learned how to throw the javelin <laughs> on YouTube. This is the millennial mentality, right? This is. Uh, his name is Julius Yego. So Julius Kenyon, he's in Kenya, realizes he's not a long distance runner. So what's he going to do? He's an athlete. He can't find a coach to coach him to do anything else in the Olympics. So he turns to YouTube. He begins to watch YouTube videos of the great javelin throwers from Europe, and he teaches himself to throw the javelin. Fast forward to the Beijing Olympics. He wins a gold medal. A gold medal, and simply from being his own coach. Technology has flattened the globe like never before and created an ability for us to teach ourselves. WebMD, another example for the hypochondriacs out there uh, for self-diagnosis. It's incredible. Yeah, we're self-educated now. Absolutely. So, we, you know, we have... Company, big companies we meet with, and they, they don't understand the value of social media, and they'll say, well, what's the ROI? Well, what's the value of connecting with the millennials for business? Yeah, that's a great question. Again, that's some of the feedback that people give is, how do I measure this? How do I measure the success of this? And it's complicated. It's not easy to unpack the value. I would say that the inverse of that is, what's the cost of me not doing it? What happens if I don't do it? And the reality is I lose business. So as an advisor, we know that about between 60 and 70% of business walks when one generation passes on and it moves to the next. And I haven't engaged that next generation. So there's a secession piece there in place where I've got to think about how I hand off and how I bridge the gap between two generations. Social media feels like that. And explain how important they are in terms of wealth. A lot of people might not like think there's a lot of money there. But yeah. It's a great question. Um, enormous amounts of wealth. We're talking between 30 and 40 trillion, with a T, dollars that's going to be shifting hands between the baby boomer generation and this next generation. Enormous amounts of wealth. The question is, where is it going to flow? Well, you're definitely proving, too, why you mentioned in your speech where you, you said Apple and Nike are the number one and number two brands and millennials, and you're proving why they spend so much time on making that connection. And you also mentioned that you know millennials are three times more likely to go out and get advice on social media than others. So tell us a little bit about that kind of persona they live in yeah. on social media and why it's important for even a mid-level business, there's yeah. not Nike and Apple, to make that connection because it's the future of their business, right? It is. Yeah, absolutely. So when you think about millennials, um, where are they going to get advice? They can go to mom and dad, they can go to their friends, or they can go to the web, which combines a lot of that together. Their phone. Absolutely. Immediately. How are you discovering? So I, I back up into, let's say, my generation, and um, I wanted to know. He's not a millennial, by I'm the way. I'm not a millennial. Even though he looks it. <laughs> I wanted to know um, what a good dentist was. I'd go to the Yellow Pages. It's a totally, totally different environment. <laughs> and I had no feedback as to whether or not this was a good dentist or not. They put those in their car now to teach their kids how <laughs> to drive. Right. That's right. So... Today, I have the incredible ability to share, sometimes among strangers, share information to provide instantaneous feedback on, mm -hmm. normally it's the tales of the distribution, the ups and the downs of an experience. So I get to share with others, does this make sense or does this not make sense? One of the cool things as advisors today, people are rating us. We are being rated online. Yes. People are going to the market to say, do business with this person or don't do business. It's happening in every business. It is, absolutely. So to have a footprint out there, I think having user-driven content is important as well. So in, uh, <laughs> so let's say, um, financial Especially services. when it's associated with your brand. Yeah, I love absolutely. that term, user. Yes, user-generated. Because user -generated, one of the things yeah. that we always preach to our clients is, it's about them, yep. it's not about you. Absolutely. And especially and the in millennials, correct? Well, the terminology that you use. So the terminology that we use in financial services can be acronyms, it can be kind of shorthand information. We talk about things, I, I'll give you the example, this was in Texas, I said stock to somebody, they thought I was talking about cattle. Cattle, of course. <laughs> so, it's a different <laughs> animal. So they, uh, 
being able to have user-driven content to where they are using the, the key search terms in a way that they think of what it is that you do. Right. So that when the average user comes in and starts to Google or find out information about you, you don't know what all those search terms are. They do. Let them drive some of that. That's making that deeper connection. Talk about what is it that millennials value? We, number one, we know experiences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they value, they're, they're socially conscious. So um, socially conscious investing and on the financial realm is very important to them. Um, they also value, just where, where you hit on the head right there, is experiences. Experiences are critical and so the question becomes, how do we help them get to those experiences without breaking the bank in the process so they don't spend all their assets? I think part of it is driving the experience of doing business with us. So I go to the dentist today, I keep going back to the medical analogies, but I think they're good. I go to the dentist today, used to when I go to the dentist, it was the worst experience ever. It was so, I mean, it's going to be uncomfortable. There's nothing they can do about that. They ease it by, my dentist has a window where I can see into the forest that his building's built up against. When I lean back, I've got a TV on the ceiling. He's making this environment comfortable for me. Yep. And I think we've got an incredible... Uh, opportunity with millennials to take the assets that we know that they need and overlay that with the experiences that they want to have. And it may come down to just reframing, helping them understand that I have this asset as a placeholder for your trip to Europe. And then what are you going to do when you go on that trip to Europe? And see, and in our world, the whole key is creating that experience right there in the palm of their hands yep. online yep. with your brand. We help you create that experience online. Love it. So f finally, takeaway here, if you're in business and you're not engaging in social media, that your destiny is what? You're behind. You're well behind today. I would argue that, um, in, especially in the financial realm, in business in general, you are going to be an unknown commodity in the future. People will not know how to find you. What are the touch points that they have to reach out and know who you are in a real way? And if there is no presence, I went to find a lawn mower, somebody to mow my yard in College Station, and the person that I chose was the only person that had a website. I didn't know who anyone else was other than word of mouth. So this is the new word of mouth. It is it's the way in all which we levels of, It's at all levels of business. It is. So don't just take Robert and Brad's word for it. Listen to the Aggie, old Nathan. <laughs> That's our Clarity Clip of the Week.